Okay, lots to cover this time, so here we go. This is episode 8, I believe, and what we're going to do is describe the role of information and communication technology in civil society and the transmission and flow of images, ideas, information, and finance. What does that all mean? Civil society, we need to define straight away because it's a key term and you need to understand what civil society is. And so here is the dictionary definition of civil society. And essentially, I see it as non-governmental groups, people, society, are trying to accomplish a specific goal. If we go back to the IB syllabus and what they want us to do with civil society, they have all of this jargon here. And I like to maybe just provide my um, translation of what all, the, all that is. So my translation of the IB syllabus uh, point and what civil society is and how it integrates into the syllabus is this. Describe how ICT, Information Communication Technologies, has allowed people to connect internationally and spread awareness to achieve common goals often through a specific movement or non-governmental organization. I think that the IB, in fact, if I had to criticize them here, should have put the word internationally in right here. Uh, and civil society and the international transmission of flow of image and flow of images, ideas, information, and finance, or international somewhere in that def the syllabus point because this is global interactions and we need to think about civil society internationally versus just within a country itself. So the first thing I want to start with is social media, and social media is a medium for which civil society can perform duties and can actually get goals accomplished because they people can communicate with one another uh, on a large scale and very quickly and effectively internationally nowadays um, through social media so there's there's social media now the rest of these um, are I'm just gonna go in order of chronological order so Greenpeace for example is a civil society organization and they operate internationally and use ICT to operate internationally because they make videos and they do crazy things and then post things on Twitter and um, they try to g gain people's attention to certain environmental issues and, and things like that using the internet. Okay, um, WikiLeaks, which is a civil society organization that you can donate to or actually provide information to, uh, is a NGO that their goal is basically to wow well, this is a, a loaded one because uh, WikiLeaks would probably somewhat disagree with my uh, my analysis of them but essentially what they're trying to do I guess is um, provide information for people that uh, would not normally be available and they are trying to expose certain things that they believe could potentially be human rights violations and um, and things that governments are doing and, and other organizations are doing that may not be technically legal. And so uh, WikiLeaks operates uh, using ICT by providing you this opportunity to, um, to send them documents or upload videos or whatever that you might be in possession of that, you know, governments and, and businesses and banks and all sorts of different organizations might not want you to have. So I would argue that WikiLeaks is definitely uh, the civil society. The Arab Spring, this is an interesting one. So the Arab Spring, obviously, uh, was in 2011, 2012, and, and uh, f further on when um, in Tunisia the, the man lit himself on fire and it sparked protests across the across North Africa and the Middle East, um, culminating in some respects in the advancement on Tahrir Square in Egypt. And uh, the the thing about the Arab Spring was they used the social media in Egypt to um, to organize and to bring people together to be able to um, to be able to uh, come to um, agreements on what they want from the government and what they don't want from the government or if the government should be um, ousted. And 
they used Twitter, they used Facebook to, to organize and to send videos to one another and so on and so forth. And so social media played a huge role and that's a distinct factor, like I said at the beginning here, of ICT um, in organizing people that are not part of a government but instead are the, the populace, the, the society, the civil society. And so ICT played a huge role in that. Occupy Wall Street, um, again, 2012, 2011, um, it was a protest movement that gained a lot of momentum after people were using the hashtag Occupy Wall Street, uh, hashtag OWS, and trying to get one another involved in this movement that is a sort of anti-capitalist movement, you know, the 1% versus the 99%. And they were trying to bring down Wall Street by protesting right downtown Manhattan uh, near where the New York Stock Exchange is. And so um, ICT bringing people together again was, was absolutely essential in making that happen and, and allowing people to, um, to, to come together in, in such force. And this actually had reverberations, if we're going to talk about it internationally, throughout the entire world. And there were occupied movements in many, many major cities and countries around the world. So there's that. Coney 2012, you guys might have heard of this. This is a crazy one. So um, irrespective of everything that happened with Coney 2012, there's no doubt in anyone's mind, I believe, that this was a, a successful uh, push to provide awareness to uh, the the global population of what Joseph Kony is doing with the Lord's Resistance Army, and I can even talk about it because I watched the video myself. And so the the film Invisible Children, the film that Invisible Children made about Kony and providing awareness, and then everybody spreading that message. I mean, that is essential, quintessential civil society. Uh, you know, operating internationally using ICT to be able to make uh, whatever the goal is, in this case, to topple uh, Joseph Kony's guerrilla army and and accomplish those goals. So there's another one. This last one that I want to talk about quick is uh, Google Person Finder. This one's really neat. So I would argue that this is part of civil society as well, where um, if a disaster occurs, you can go on to Google Person Finder and you can um, essentially be, provide uh, your name or if you're looking for someone, uh, you can provide the name of someone else. And then if there's a match, uh, if the person is missing and you don't know where they are, this, uh, this resource can allow you to connect with the, the person that you're, that you're looking for. So I tweeted about this uh, a while back when Typhoon Haiyan was ripping through the Visayas in the Philippines, Central Philippines. And I was in Manila and I was just spreading awareness with Google Person Finder telling people use this use this resource because there are a lot of people from the Visayas in Manila and I was trying to get people to, to say, hey, look, this is a great way to be able to connect with someone that you, you know, that you're not you're not sure if they're um, if they're missing or or you know, you can't contact them because you, you might not have coverage on a cell phone or something, but they have been able to, you know, get on the internet and do this really quick potentially. So at least you know that they're safe. So again, ICT, civil society, this is, you know, accomplishing a goal, trying to save lives. That's, that's what they're, uh, they're all about. Okay. Last part, because we have to talk about finance in this, uh, in the syllabus point, I just want to point out this list of, um, of things that relate to finance here in terms of using ICT for finance. If you're looking at it, it's a very common sense, geography is common sense kind of thing, where if if you look at how finance has changed over time and what we do now using technology and how we in, uh, integrate technology into, into finance and operating internationally, online bank accounts, ATMs, online bill pay, bank cards, online stock market trading, mobile phone payments, comparison websites, and online shopping and, and e-commerce. I mean... All of that, which many of you probably do anyways, is part of how ICT plays a role in finance. And so I just, I don't want to talk a lot about that because it's, it's pretty obvious you can use any example from your everyday life uh, for, for that part there. So I won't go into it in, in any more detail. But 
I hope that helps, and I hope that you guys check out these websites. There's a lot of really good information on here, so do your own research as well. Catch you next time.